Well, it's a very exciting day today. We're going to be doing the much anticipated and highly controversial five window swap into this cab. So I'm going to be cutting the windows out of that rack over there and attempting to graph them into here. This isn't necessarily going to be a how to because uh, this is actually my first time doing one of these swaps. And on top of that, it's also my first time welding and my first time doing any kind of metal work or body work. So we'll all be learning together here. So I hope you enjoyed this journey. And by the end of this video, these windows will hopefully be installed in this cab. We'll begin today's journey by drilling out all of the spot welds that hold the drip rail in place, as well as all the spot welds that hold the outer skin to the inner pillar of the cab. Then I will use a seam splitter tool to carefully break loose all of the spot welds. Just a better look at what I'm doing here. I've uh, split the drip rail away and then split this outer portion away from the inner post. We drilled out all the welds there. And on the inside here, I've done the same thing. I've drilled out all these welds, holding that on to the post. Now the problem we have here is that this truck is a rusted pile of garbage that we're cutting these windows out. So I would like to drill out all the welds on the bottom here and then just take the whole assembly out. But this is all rotted out on both sides. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to section it in somewhere in along here and hope that there's enough good metal there to actually do that. And on the outside here, we're gonna cut across like this. We're gonna try to keep about uh, three quarters of an inch or so away from uh, this edge here. And we're gonna use that as a splice line and then come down through here, down through here. And then at the bottom here, I'm hoping I can splice it in through here, which I don't really like doing that, but I can't access the factory seam in here. There's kind of two 90s that go in here and then it's spot welded down through there but once it's all together you can't get in there and weld that anymore but the problem we're going to have is I can see there's already rust starting over here which is why we're not cutting the whole assembly out in addition to the fact that this is rotted out but anyways um, so yeah we're just going to only take what absolute minimum that we can off of here but worst case I'll have to section it up higher which I don't really want to do but we're kind of starting with the uh, the donor cab here and just disassembling it and then that'll kind of dictate what our plan is before we actually start cutting on the uh, the good cab which uh, this would all be a lot easier if we had started with something that wasn't garbage or if we weren't doing this at all or if we just bought the uh, pre-made five window conversion kit out of the states and uh, that's probably about twenty five hundred dollars canadian so uh yeah that's why we're doing it this way so a bit of a change of plans here, I've decided to drill out all the welds in the pinch weld and separate the uh, outer skin from the inner skin. Uh, rather than try and splice it all in as one complete unit, I believe this is going to make my job a little bit easier. But we do have to be very careful not to uh, damage the pinch weld. Pinch weld on these trucks is quite small and easily damaged and if we bend it out of shape then obviously the glass won't fit, which isn't very ideal. Once we get the inner panel separated, then I'll make the final cuts on the outer panel, which will then have that piece removed from the donor cab. Do you recall a few episodes ago when we were installing the inner cowl panels and I made a huge point about not trying to remove these weather strip seal channels because there's not really any clean way to remove them without destroying them completely. Well, guess what we get to do now? We're going to be removing these. Originally, we we're going to splice the inner panel in here and just butt weld it or something or other. However, I started investigating on the driver's side and discovered that all of the welds holding this channel on were already broken or possibly non-existent from the factory and someone had just 
gone around and screwed it on. So it's already broken off on the driver's side. So I might as well section it in on the uh, factory seam on that side because now I have to somehow weld this back on, which means just in the interest of keeping things symmetrical, I now have to try to remove the strip on this side and uh, do the same thing. So that'll be fun. That actually came off without too much uh, drama. When you go to put this back on, what you could do is use structural panel adhesive. Uh, that stuff's pretty uh, indestructible and it'd save you trying to weld all these holes. But uh, that stuff's like, uh, last time I bought it was like a hundred bucks for uh, a tube of that stuff. So I'll probably just try and weld it back on, but it actually came off not too bad. So that's good. And I just got three of these loosen off and I'll just kind of pry this out of the way. I might have to take this weld out as well, but the next step is to drill out all these welds here. So I'll uh, skip that and cut to the part where we start cutting the rest of this out. So the reason I cut this out at the factory edge here and also left this body line is for one, this is adding strength to the panel so it's not gonna if I cut off too much then it's gonna want to flop around and I won't get it back in exactly to the shape that it needs to be so this rounded edge is adds a lot of strength to this and it's not going to move around it's going to go back exactly where it needs to be same reason here this edge is kind of my reference point as long as this goes in here where it needs to be now I've seen these done where they cut them off here and then just bubble them here, which you can do. The problem is as soon as you get rid of this edge here, then you no longer have a reference point of exactly where this window is supposed to be. So by leaving this edge and just drilling out the spot welds, I can literally just cut this off, plonk it on, and it's going to go back exactly where it needs to be. There's no, no guesswork there. It's, it's basically right in a factory installation. There's no extra body work to in here. It's uh, it's just a plug and play type of thing. The other trick here is if you're working on any older vehicle is you want to get yourself one of these Taylor's tape measures. Uh, it's There's not a single straight panel on any of this. And so if you try using a regular measuring tape to kind of measure where things go, you're never going to get an accurate measurement. So for this, I can just measure off of the uh, donor section and then I can transfer that measurement onto here. In this case, I'm measuring around the bottom here. I can transfer that measurement and then I know exactly where I cut it off and I can make a mark there. And then in this case, what I did is I don't want to cut it to exactly the shape of this because I don't know what the shape of this is yet exactly. And I don't want to cut the hole too large because that would kind of suck. So what I did is I figured out where the bottom is, what this measurement is to here from the door edge. And I transferred it onto here. And I made that mark. And then I have the uh, drip rail drilled out here. And I just tuck it under here. And I laid it on. And then I traced around this edge, just where it lays on here which gives me a rough idea of the shape. Obviously it's not exactly, which that mark ended up over here. And then what I did is I just drew a line between this actual dimensional measurement and just the rough laying it on measurement. And I, and I just kind of made a line there, which is going to give me about a half inch or so all the way around of extra material. And then at the top here, there's not really any accurate way to measure this rounded thing. I mean, there is, but that takes a bunch of time. So all I did is I, all I did is I traced around and then I just eyeballed a half inch down from that and drew another line, which you probably can't see on the camera, but, uh, cause I'm just using a, uh, pencil for that. But there is a line there and I'm going to cut to that lower line. I guess we'll stop talking and start cutting here.
Now what I can do is I can lay this into place here and I'll start getting a much uh, better idea of how it's gonna actually fit the opening. If you look on the inside, you can see how it's still overlapping the original metal. So I haven't cut it too big yet. But what I'll do next is I'll go in this jam here and I'll start there and I'll mark exactly where it needs to be cut back to be butt welded at the top and at the bottom. And then I'll cut those back so that they're gonna be a butt welded, but I'm only cutting back this edge. And then as soon as I cut that back for a butt weld, it's gonna allow this, this panel to continue to roll around. And then this edge here with his body line, then that's gonna line up where it needs to be. So then what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll cut just this body line area for a butt weld. And then I have my body lines and my door edges lined up for a butt weld. And then once that's all lined up, then I can come in and I'll tack it there, there, probably back here. And then along this lower edge here, I'll get that all, I'll just drop that. I'll get that all tacked. And then I can actually go in and, and slice through this area here and peel all that out and then butt weld that. Once the panel is tack welded in every inch or so, and I'm happy with the fitment of it, I'll go in and begin butt welding it. And I do that by welding about a half inch at a time and then immediately grinding the weld down and then repeating that whole process all the way along the back of the window opening. You'll also notice as I start working towards the back here that I'm gonna be constantly rechecking the panel to make sure it's straight with my hand and I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm checking to make sure that there's nothing going on that I don't want. And if there is, then I'll correct that problem as it arises rather than waiting until the end. And so uh, it just helps to keep constantly rechecking, especially on these flatter areas where the panel is going to be more likely to want to distort and uh, move out of shape on you. Now, if you're interested, I do have a much more detailed video on this welding process called Is There a Faster, Easier Way to MIG Weld Thin Sheet Metal? 
Now, uh, this process works quite well for me, but uh, it doesn't work all the time. Sometimes there's better ways to do it. Um, for example, if I had uh, left the inner structure on this panel, meaning I wouldn't have any access to the back of the weld, then I would have been more inclined to take a more traditional approach to welding. And I would have welded uh, a couple tacks at a time, let it completely cool and just work the whole way across the panel like that. But that way would have taken considerably more time. And even then, if the panel had gotten away from me or started to walk around, there would be no way of correcting it because I wouldn't have any access to the backside. This way I can get a little braver. You can see here, I'm gonna make a small correction here. Um, but uh, for the most part, this panel stayed uh, super straight as it went in. And so there is no, uh, no real reason to uh, mess with it any further beyond welding and grinding it down. So, but things don't always work out that way. And it's just nice to have that extra little bit of security with access to the backside if you are going to be uh, using this process. Well, this thing is now officially a five window and I think for my first time welding and doing any kind of metal work, uh, it could have gone a lot worse. Uh, it still needs a coat of filler and whatever to smooth it all out, but uh, there's no weirdness going on or anything. And in fact, I didn't even have to do any hammer and dolly work on it, which I thought I was going to. It even stayed straight all in through here, which I was concerned I was going to walk around, but it didn't. You know, for the truck that's going on, it's certainly uh, good enough. I know there's a lot of those will it run type channels around where they try to get some old uh, engine running and whatever, but around here, uh, what we do is it's called will it fill, uh, which is where will it take a coat of filler on it. And uh, I think uh, we're at the point where it will. So total success there, at least on the outside. We, we still got uh, lots of work to do yet. So far, I have to say that I'd probably do it uh, this way again if I had to do another one of these conversions. Uh, I think uh, cutting it uh, around here and keeping it tight to this window frame is definitely the way to go. I also think uh, removing the inner panel uh, made it a lot easier for fitting and I thought I was going to have to do a bunch of hammer and dolly work to get it straight again but it ended up uh, not being necessary, but just even just getting both panels fit together for this place, it, it's so much easier when you have access to the backside. So time well spent there. And the only downside with that is when they weld these things in from the factory, I think this flange was bigger and then they sp run their spot weld over it and then they have a guy come back and they grind it back so a lot of these welds are like right on the edge, if not on the edge. So that's gonna be a bit tricky to, to weld that all back in. But again, I think for the time we saved, you know, having access to the backside there, it just makes, uh, makes it a lot easier and uh, a lot uh, cleaner job in the long run, possibly. The only thing I would uh, do differently is instead of trying to weld it along this bottom edge here, I would uh, separate this factory flange here at the spot welds and just take the whole thing and then plug weld it back on through here. 
The reason I didn't do that is because I still have some plans for this cab and the only way to actually separate these spot welds is you have to cut it down here, take out the whole assembly as one, and then when it's on the bench, then you can drill out all the spot welds. Otherwise, it's impossible to separate these two layers from itself. And I didn't wanna do any more cutting on this cab than I had to, because like I said, I still have some plans for it, so I don't wanna completely destroy it, but that just would have been a little cleaner job to plug weld it from the inside instead of welding it all the way through here. But we were able to make it work, so not a big deal. So in the next video, part two, I'm gonna be welding in this inner panel, which I have a way to do that, which is hopefully gonna work out well. Uh, but it is gonna be a bunch of extra work. And the reason for that is I have a bunch of rust repair to do above this back window here. And the only way to really do that right is gonna to be to take off the rest of the inner panel that I haven't already removed which involves drilling out all the spot welds down here, drilling out all the spot welds around the window frame and separating this whole panel. So the plan, well, you have to tune in to see what the plan is and how I'm gonna put all this back in, but I think it should be a fairly clean installation, at least other than all the rust repair I have to do off camera, plus all the dents that I've got to fix off camera as well. But once I get that sorted out, then I think putting that uh, inner frame back in should uh, go reasonably well, but uh, famous last words. Overall though, uh, so far, I'd have to say that I'd probably do it uh, the way I'm doing it again, other than that one little thing at the bottom there, but uh, other than that, it's going well so far, but that could all change in the next video, and this could just be a total disaster, but uh, yeah. Uh, one other thing is I did check the price of uh, the kit that they make to do this, which includes the uh, outer panel as well as the inner panel for a five window and uh it's actually about sixteen hundred dollars canadian which is still that's still more than i paid for this whole truck and the uh donor truck as well so uh not really worth it to me having said if i was doing this for a customer i would probably just have them order up that kit it would be cheaper than dealing with rusty cab because it never ends well when somebody else brings you uh, used parts and then wants you to weld them onto their vehicle and the used parts always end up being worse than what you're taking off of the vehicle and it's just a big mess on my end and just costs everyone more money so um, I think even if I bought the kit I would do it very similar I would leave the inner panel all one piece and then I would just cut around and butt weld it in just like I did here because the aftermarket one that they make is designed for there's a flange all across the roof here and I don't really like uh, doing flanges or lap welds on exterior panels stuff like this it just usually ends up being more work to do it that way than to just butt weld it so uh, that's what we do is we would just cut what we needed out of the aftermarket panel and weld it in but I'm not spending 1600 bucks on that so this works this so far is working out pretty well for us Today I'm going to show you how you can metal finish this massive dent using the Pennsylvania porcupine technique. Now for the next step here, you're going to want to get yourself one of these unispotters. If you uh, don't have one already, I highly recommend you get one. These are essential for all your metal finishing needs. So we're gonna load our little stud in here and we're gonna apply the studs to the dented surface. Helps if you plug it in first.
Well, we got the studs welded on. I just wanted to take a moment to show you just how punched in this thing is. It's in there a fair amount, so it'll take a bit, but we'll get it metal finished. We'll even be able to save these original louvers because that's extremely important. Now the mistake a lot of people make when they're metal finishing with the unispotter is they get out the old slide hammer gear and they start tugging on it. But as soon as you do that, you ruin all your chances of actually metal finishing this. So I'm going to show you the one simple trick that you can use to actually cleanly pull metal out with the unispotter and get it perfectly metal finished every time. Now what I've done here is I've mixed up a bunch of product and I'm going to apply a skim coat to this piece of cardboard which I've taped on wax paper onto. So I'm going to apply a skim coat of product to the side that has the wax paper taped onto it. This is very critical. Now we have a skim coat of product applied. Uh, this next step is critical. We're just going to take some more of our unispotter studs and we're going to install them uh, horizontally into our product. This is just going to give us a little better metal finish. Like I said, this is optional, but I like to kind of go the extra mile and uh, make sure I'm doing the best job possible. Okay, once you're satisfied with the placement of your metal finishing, I'm going to take this and we're going to invert it. And we're going to apply it to our previously installed studs. And you just want to kind of poke it in there. Just poke away. Don't be afraid of it. This is one of the hardest parts of uh, metal finishing, but uh, uh, please uh, don't give up. Just keep at it and uh, you'll find if you stick with this, um, it's, the results are well worth the extra time that it takes. As they say, Rome wasn't built in a day. Okay, we got all of our uh, studs lined up on here, so now we just want to Really push this in here and make sure it's seated on there nice and tight. Now we're just going to let the uh, metal finishing set uh, until it gets tacky and then I'll uh, show you what to do next. Well, it's very exciting. Our metal finish is starting to set up. So I'm going to take my uh, side cutters here and I'm going to trim off all of these uh, studs so that they're flush with the cardboard backing. Little tip is you can actually save these uh, cut off pieces for future metal finishing projects. Now I'm very carefully going to start peeling off our backer to reveal the beautifully finished product underneath. Now all that's left is to just stand back and admire a job well done. As you can see the dent has been completely metal finished out. The nice thing about using these studs is that a magnet will still stick to it. 
So when you get those uh, pesky people coming to look at your car to check if there's Bondo in it, well, the magnet will stick and they'll know that it was done properly. Now you may notice there's a few residual pinholes here. So what I like to use for that is uh, another fine product. It's this uh, lacquer spot putty here and you can just uh, apply a little dab in all those pinholes and it'll just uh, metal finish out beautifully for you. And uh, if you're left with an invisible repair, that will uh, last long enough to sell whatever vehicle you're uh, working on. Also just wanted to issue a bit of a disclaimer here that I actually do prefer the uh, three window cabs as opposed to these five windows. I just like the look of them better always have. However, the point of this exercise is to recreate the look of the GMC cab that was originally on this chassis and the look of that truck, how it would have been kind of, sort of. So that's why we're doing that. If I wanted a three window, uh, there's a three window truck sitting outside that we could have started with that's in uh, much better shape and would have made more sense to put that truck together. So what we're doing is we're basically combining two garbage cabs and uh, making a five window truck, just like this, how this truck was, because I said I was gonna save the GMC and I'm trying to save as much of it as I can. Uh, literally the pieces that we cut out of that cab are the only parts that are actually salvageable for any kind of restoration work. So that's what we're doing there. That's the reasoning for that. The other reason we're doing this is because I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube where other people have done this five window conversion. I watched those videos a couple of years ago or whatever. I think one of them was on a trucks show or whatever show was on TV there for a while. And so as soon as I saw that, I kind of started thinking how I would do something like that. And so I've been thinking about how I do that for a while. And uh, so it's just something I wanted to try. And uh, both of those videos I think I watched, they were using the aftermarket kit. But, uh, you know, uh, even in the States, that kit is probably eight or $900 US by the time it's all shipped to your door and whatever. So, and up here it's $1,600 Canadian. So I know if someone of you have an old junk cab or something laying around and you want to graft those windows in, kind of like what I'm doing, then I think uh, I wanted to put out a video on that kind of thing. Because, I mean, you know, you can probably find a cab for less than uh, eight or nine hundred dollars US, I would hope. So, uh, so far, uh, this project is going about uh, as good as I could have hoped, if not a little better than I was hoping. So, we'll see uh, soon when we get started on the inner structure. That's probably going to be just as big of a job as the outside, if not more of a job. Plus, I've got a bunch of uh, rust and dents that I got to deal with off camera before we get started on that. So I'm hoping uh, we'll uh, have that video out uh, by Saturday, but uh, that's going to be part two. Um, but apparently there's some kind of holiday coming up or something like that that might interfere with some of that. Uh, I can tell that because uh, people in the stores and on the road are acting like complete idiots. Uh, so usually you know something's in the air. and. Uh, I guess we got to deal with that now too so but anyways there will be another video on uh, this conversion here unless i just it goes horribly wrong but i'm so committed now that I don't got much choice so next video we'll be doing the inner structure as well as i've got to fit all of the glass back here um, these corner windows are tempered and so we don't have much uh, wiggle room there. They either fit or they don't. And uh, the back window here is laminated, but again, we want that to fit because if you gotta start getting custom glass made, it kinda hurts the next guy if the back window or something ever gets smashed out. So we wanna make sure all the glass fits. That's the final test. Can't remember what else I was gonna say. So uh, thanks again, everyone for watching and uh, liking the videos and uh, subscribing and unsubscribing or whatever it is you want to do and uh, sharing them with your friends or people you hate and also uh, thanks to all the people doing the super thanks and super chats and 
leaving nice comments on the video or leaving negative comments that I can laugh at or whatever kind of comments you want to leave. I always enjoy reading them. And also a huge thank you to the patrons of the show who have been helping to keep the show going. And also just another quick aside, uh, there's been a few of you who have been kind of going through the comments as well and have been answering questions for me, which is actually really helpful because uh, I get asked a lot of the same questions over and over again, or which is fine, or questions about things that I did in uh, the video, the current video, where people just uh, skipped over it or missed it or forgot about it by the time they got to the end or whatever, that's what happens, that's fine. Or things I've mentioned in previous videos, and some of you have been going through the comments and actually answering those questions for me or giving them links to uh, my previous videos, so I, I really appreciate that because I, I don't mind answering questions or whatever, but it does take away from uh, doing the actual work or making the actual videos. So if somebody comes along and uh, saves me a bunch of that time and helps me out there, I certainly appreciate it. I'm very fortunate that I've got such a great audience on this uh, YouTube thing that we're doing, so again, thank you to all of you, and uh, we'll see you again soon with uh, more welding and cutting and hammering on this old uh, GMC or Chevy or whatever it is now. Crawl out of this thing now. Oh.